Have you ever ran into a really difficult part of a game and gotten smacked down over and over? You get smacked down so often that you start to get angrier. Then, that final boss, that cheap character, that water dungeon in the Legend of Zelda game gets tougher and tougher as you get angrier. It's like each little bit of rage in you makes that mountain in front of you even harder to climb. The fountain! Is that it? It is! Kira, just that close. Welcome to the negative emotion spiral. Anger and negative emotions have a very real effect on the way we play and how we win. The effect is so real that one psychological study followed six basketball players over six games and found they had more unsuccessful moments in game the more negative emotions they had. So what's this have to do with Smash? Say you mess up an input, you get angry, you rush the next neutral interaction, you lose it and your stock, then your opponent taunts. That's right, today's lesson is all about the strategy of disrespect. And if you're looking for help with your game across the board, then go to ProGuides.com. We're in the process of building a great learning platform for Smash, one that offers coaching, courses from the pros like MKLeo, and even more. If you go to our website, you'll notice we have a bar that rates taunts. That's no joke, though it's a bit tongue-in-cheek. Whether you play football or fighting games, basketball or brawl, trash talking and taunting are a part of the game. Oh, oh he beats it out, he gets the stun! Hey, there's <laughs> Line it up, replay crew! EX wingless airplane, knuckle do, of course, only needs to win one set. You don't want to disrespect a person's character out of game, but in-game disrespect is another story. <laughs> When it comes to sports, some of the world's best competitors have used taunts and strategic disrespect to their advantage. Hold on. Did he just do that? Be wary, disrespecting an opponent carries a big risk of backfiring. Remember, taunt to get bodied is the truest combo in Smash. So, in this video, we're gonna go deep into how to play against your opponent and their mentality. Even though taunt is just a button on the D-pad, disrespect is a surprisingly deep and tricky topic, so we're going to break it down by matching together a reward and a risk of taunting. From there, we'll talk about when and how to taunt so you'll get more of the reward and less of the risk. The first and biggest reward for disrespect is throwing off your opponent's mental game. Taunting can be really powerful because it makes us angry. When someone teabags or spams taunt after you die, it can feel like they're laughing in your face or not taking you seriously. If someone taunts right in front of you, they're inviting you to hit them and saying they aren't afraid of the hit either. And some taunts are just plain irritating. Anger changes the way we play video games because it interferes with how we calculate risk. Psychologists have run a lot of interesting studies on risk-taking and emotions, and a lot of those studies found that anger makes a lot of us more likely to take risks. If you've been playing Smash a long time, chances are you've demonstrated this fact yourself. It's part of why spamming one move over and over can work in casual and sometimes even competitive settings. We get frustrated by the move. We take more risks to beat the move. The opponent uses the move to punish our risky attack. Rinse and repeat until sodium levels are unstable. One of the taunt's biggest uses is to push your opponent to take risks. Ideally, since you taunted, you know your opponent will play more aggressively and can call out their options more easily. You may even push them into making bad approaches or whiffing a big, laggy move. However, emotion isn't open and shut. Psychologists have also found that reactions to anger vary depending on the person and the context. One article for the Journal of Behavioral Decision Making found that men more often responded to anger with risk-taking, while the reverse was true for women. Another study by psychologist Jolie Bauman found that angry people take more risks when the situation calls more on their cognition than emotion. Sort of like how when people get angry at friends or family, they'll take the least risky option and stay quiet, or take time to calm down. The main takeaway here is that anger doesn't create a universal response. Some players will take risks when taunted, other players are unflappable, and all you did by taunting them was tell them that you want them to take a risk. And for the right players in the right context, anger will light a fire. That leads us to the biggest risk of taunting, it can hype your opponent up. At any level of Smash, or any competition, you'll see autopiloting. 
This is when a player goes through the motions. Their heart isn't in the game for whatever reason, and while they're counterpicking a town and city, they're really out getting lunch with all the villagers in the background. This is one of two big reasons Taunt to get bodied is such a reliable combo. A lot of players assume a taunt will tilt their opponent off the face of the earth and lead to an easy win. But if one player was autopiloting, the taunt wakes them up, either because they got angry or because they felt challenged. The second reason the taunt to get bodied combo is so reliable is because taunts really bring out the skill gap between players. Sometimes a less skilled player in the match might try to use a taunt to shake up the better player and lessen the skill gap. Usually, the taunt does the opposite because the anger makes the better player turn off autopilot. I don't think so, amigo. Gansa Amnita. Oh. Can you remove your shirt? Whoa, 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 whoa. Not a thing that can happen. Oh, this is blow up city. Oh boy. Oh, 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 oh boy. Oh. Uh oh. Uh-oh, I don't need chest hair. While anger can make us take dumb risks or even rage quit, it can also make us perform better. Researchers at Bangor University found that effort and performance both increased when they induced a sense of hope or anger into the participants of their study. The anger didn't help with mental tasks, but did with physical ones that involved lashing out. Smash is in a bit of a mixed state where it is highly mental and physical, so that research could apply. For a real-world example of taunting someone off autopilot, take Reggie Miller, one of basketball's biggest trash talkers. In his rookie year, he played an exhibition match against Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan phoned in the first half because the game didn't really matter. Reggie Miller ended the first half with more points than MJ and decided to trash talk. That trash talk gave Michael Jordan a reason to play. Jordan popped off in the second half, ending the game with nearly 40 points. The first lesson in taunting is to choose the moment wisely. Think about who you're taunting and how they'll respond. Don't taunt someone on autopilot and don't taunt a player at a higher skill level. If you don't know the opponent at all, then your taunt comes with a big risk because you can't be sure of their skill level, personality, or investment in the game. The pros that use taunts most effectively use them very intentionally as conditioning tools. They taunt based on their game plan and who they're facing. For good examples, you could look to Knuckle Doo in Street Fighter or you could look to Muhammad Ali in boxing. In Ali's now famous match against George Foreman, he developed a strategy called Rope-A-Dope, where he'd lean against the ropes and dodge Foreman's blows. Ali would dodge Foreman and counterattack until Foreman ran out of gas. Foreman was a very hard hitter, so the strategy was risky. Since Ali needed Foreman to throw a lot of punches, and since Ali's strategy was already risky, taunting was the smart choice. Ali peppered Foreman with barbs before and throughout the match, pushing Foreman even further into the aggressive style Ali had prepared himself to be. Ali's taunting helped him defeat George Foreman and score one of the biggest upset victories of his career. Taunting isn't just for the opponent, though. It can also reset your mentality and fire you up. In fact, Ali's famous line, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, was a taunt aimed at Foreman. The rest of the quote goes, his hands can't hit what his eyes can't see. Now you see me, now you don't. George thinks he will, but I know he won't. The mental game isn't entirely an offensive one. You've got to keep your own mentality strong. That's why you'll see competitors like Light and Mars do quick, easy taunts after a fairly normal stock. They're getting in their own heads and hyping themselves up. Taunts can help keep your mind positively engaged because just by issuing a challenge to the opponent, you're also saying that you're ready for it. Taunts can also be funny and goofy, helping you relax and stay positive. Repeat crouching, changing the music, and spamming a weird or cool animation helps you stay loose. Sports psychologist Jim Taylor coined a useful distinction between a negative and positive emotional response with the terms emotional threat and emotional challenge. Emotional threat sparks what Taylor calls a negative emotional chain, where you might feel things like fear, anger, shame, and hopelessness. Emotional challenge puts you in a positive loop where the emphasis is on fun, hope, excitement, and enjoyment. Taunts are a super gamey part of fighting games, so leaning into them can help you remember Smash is a fun game. That snaps you out of feeling emotional threat and into feeling emotional challenge. Unfortunately, it can be hard to use taunts to fire yourself up because taunts are bad options. They're risky, and many of them don't actually hit the opponent. While a taunt can fire you up or help you take the game in stride, it can't relieve pressure. 
If you're constantly in disadvantage or neutral, then you have no room or time to taunt. This is an obvious downside, but it's possible even for pros to take a second too long to taunt, dash dance, or fire themselves up and take a hit for it. The second lesson in taunting is to use it cautiously and while an advantage. Light or Mars tend to taunt after taking a stock while the other player is on the Angel platform. Normally, be sure that you're not giving up pressure or a free hit when you taunt. But if you want to be really spicy, you can try to use a taunt in a risky spot as bait or as demoralization. Using a taunt in a tight window where it could still be punished can force a careless option out of your opponent as well. There's not much more demoralizing than being punished for trying to punish a taunt. That's what's so awesome about taunts in all fighting games. They're an extra high-risk option that everyone can use to win the mental game. They're some of the worst moves in the game by any conventional standard, but we'll see top competitors use them anyways. The science and history behind taunts and disrespect can be complicated, but our advice is actually pretty simple. Remember that you can use taunts to demoralize an opponent, but this can easily backfire, especially if they're at a higher skill level or seem to be autopiloting. So be wary of who you're facing and if the taunt fits into the game plan you have for them. You can also use taunts to fire yourself up and shift your emotions from negative to positive. An even better way to fire yourself up, though, is to mash that subscribe button. That one. Right there. Notifications will keep you going and engaged every day when we'll have new videos to keep you sharp on your Smash game right in your inbox. So go ahead and do that, and taunt us in the comments below. We dare you. When you do use taunts in Smash, use them responsibly and out of distance of a hard punish. <laughs> That's all. Stay bad-mannered, my friends.